Good evening, my name is Katarzyna Nowicka and welcome to Poland Daily News. The Polish Senate has rejected the amendment of the Common Courts Bill in its entirety after the same adopted it in December. Now the bill will return to the lower chamber, where the Law and Justice Party has majority and will surely adopt it once again. Kto jest przeciw? The rejection of the amendments by the Senate doesn't really come as a surprise, as the Senate clubs, consisting mainly of the opposition, recommended such an approach earlier. Nonetheless, this morning the Deputy Speaker of the Senate, Stanisław Karczewski, hoped that the changes in the judiciary proposed by the Law and Justice Party will be adopted by the higher chamber after all. I have a feeling that we may adopt the amendments today after all. In connection to the changes to the Polish judiciary being worked on by the Polish Parliament, the European Parliament adopted a resolution on Thursday concerning the rule of law in Poland in which it appealed to the European Commission to make use of the motions to apply for provisional measures, an example special sanctions. In turn, the opinion of the Venice Commission is that the new regulations would weaken the Polish court's independence. The Senate may be perceived as not independent in deciding on internal Polish matters. Now the project of the amendments will return to the same. The Senate's motion to reject the bill can only be accepted with a definite majority of votes, with at least half the chamber present. As the Law and Justice Party holds the majority, it's almost certain that the changes will be adopted in their original form from December 20th. After this, the final decision will belong to the President. During a meeting with the residents of Opole Lubelskie, President Andrzej Duda referred to the political dispute over the reform of the judiciary. In his own words, there are areas that need repairing in Poland. Justice must be repaired. Judges in Poland have an important part of state power devoted to them. They pass judgment in court not according to their own visions and beliefs, but on behalf of Poland, and this must never be forgotten. They pass judgment on behalf of Poland. This is how every court order begins. In connection with the above, this involves obligations, but above all responsibility for conducting civic affairs in such a way as to serve the citizens and serve the country. This is their primary duty and they must never forget that. This is also the judicial oath. Whoever does not follow this violates the iron rule of judicial oath. Unfortunately, there is a group of judges who completely forgot what their real role is. They forgot who they serve and why they were appointed in the first place. I hope that we will slowly, consistently and calmly fix the judicial system and remove those who are wrongfully a part of it. This will be best for the Polish judiciary and the Polish country. According to the Polster Institute poll for Super Express, Andrzej Duda has a chance to win the May presidential elections in the first round. The current president has a major advantage over the candidate of the civic coalition, Małgorzata Kidawa-Błońska. The former journalist, Szymon Hołownia, comes third. In a survey conducted between January 14th and 16th, respondents were asked who they would vote for if the elections were to take place this Sunday. The most popular choice was the current President Andrzej Duda with 45%. Over 23% of respondents are ready to vote for the candidate of the Civic Coalition, Małgorzata Kidawa-Błońska. Former journalist Szymon Hołownia, who received the support of less than 10% of voters, came third in the pollster survey. He was followed by a candidate of the left, the the current member of the European Parliament, Robert Biedroń, with a score of 9%, and Władysław kosiniak kamysz leader of the Polish People's Party, with the support of 7.9% of respondents. Krzysztof Bosak from the Confederation closes the list, with just over 5% of the survey participants ready to vote for him. The famous Louvre Museum in Paris was forced to close today as part of its staff on strike gathered in front of the building, blocking the entrance to the most visited museum in the world. The general strike in France against President Macron's proposed pension reform has entered its 44th day. A crowd of excited tourists showed up at the Louvre to see the special exhibition on Leonardo da Vinci, which opened last year to mark the 500th anniversary of his death. The plans were, however, quashed by the anti-Macron protesters. In the long line outside, tourists were visibly angry, booing the protesters, but others expressed support for the strikers. I am a unionist, I understand them perfectly. For us, it's annoying to come to Paris and find the Louvre closed, but I support them, I understand them perfectly. The point is, if no one fights for our rights, no one will do it for us. 
On Thursday, large crowds took to the streets across France to protest against President Macron's planned pension reform, which would see the retirement age increase significantly. According to trade union representatives, 250,000 people had joined the protests. The strike is still here, alive. We are talking a lot about the strike at the ports as well, which is a new sector that has amplified the movement since last week. Similar to the previous days of protest action, today there are a lot of professionals who are on strike. President Macron had hoped to weaken the resolve of the protesters by making some concessions, as the general strike has been going on for longer than any other such strike since the 1960s. We are very far from having obtained significant gains, so we are continuing the movement, both on re-evaluation of salaries, because it is an important question, but also on the question of pensions. Nothing has been resolved on the question of pensions. Nothing has budged. They pretend to have a budget on the question of their pivot age, but we expect further deterioration on that. So for us, the movement must continue. The strike is expected to put a significant dent in France's GDP growth forcing Macron to consider making additional painful cuts to the 2020 budget. That's all for tonight. Now on to Poland Daily Business with Aleksander Wierzejski and his guest. Good night.